Hello and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shadeh Roberts. This is a space where you can get biblical and practical wisdom for your everyday life and journey with Christ. If that is something that you will be interested in, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what's happening here on this channel. And if you are already subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in again today. Today, I want to share a word with you that I believe is at the heart of God. Uh, I believe that it's an area uh, where the Lord wants to bring a little bit of a rebuke to the hearts of parents. I believe, um, and particularly women, um, because you know that that you are my audience, you know, as women. But I believe it's at the core of what God wants mothers to understand as nurturers, as those who. Um, sometimes take a primary role with children. You may be asking the, you know, um, what does this title mean? Do I hate my children? You know, who in their right mind would hate their children? Well, I want to go into the Word of God today to show you um, some biblical principles and to point out something that I believe will be very sobering and it will help you to really understand if you are loving God out of yourself or if you're loving, loving your children you know, from, with, from, from yourself and your own wisdom, are you showing love to them based off of biblical principles? So I just want us to get some wisdom today on something that I believe um, that really, really, really is, is uh, pricking the heart of God as it pertains to parents and children um, in these days. Before we get into it, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. And we just bless you and praise you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, for any way that you want to give us wisdom, any way that you want to help us on the journey, Lord God. We submit to it, Lord. And so, Father, I just invite you in, Lord God, into this space right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Speak to our hearts and speak to our minds, Lord God. Bless us to hear what heaven is saying. Bless us to hear what's at your heart, what's at the core of your heart on this matter, Lord God. Speak to us, bring about change, bring about deliverance, bring about freedom, bring enlightenment, bring wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, Lord God. We ask this of you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I decrease, Father, that you might increase. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, to just have your way. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I want to read a scripture for you, and I'm going to get to the root of the title of this message. And I really want you to hear what God is speaking to us as parents in this day and this time. Um, because I believe there's some order that God wants to establish and there's some discipline that he wants to bring back to families and particularly with children. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24. And this is in the English Standard Version. It says, whoever spares the rod hates his son but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him again whoever spares the rod hates his son or daughter but he who loves him or her is diligent to discipline him or her Okay, that same passage of scripture in the King James Version says, He that spared his rod hated his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times. So if you have studied the word of God, you know, uh, to any extent, you'll find somewhere in there a thread of God showing love to his children by the discipline that he gives us, not the punishment but the discipline that he gives us. When we step out of boundaries, when we step out of lines, when we're going our own way, when we're leaning in our own direction, he'll do something, allow something, or begin to steer us back in the right path. And oftentimes he does that with discipline. Either he tells us there's something we need to do to come into alignment with that discipline, or we will reap the consequences of our actions. And in that way, he's showing us discipline. I want to hone in on this particular scripture today because it has specifically the word rod in it. And, you know, uh, in today's time, uh, something that's so prevalent right now is uh, uh, this term of gentle parenting and, 
you know, uh, uh, these sorts of things. And there's nothing to, there is absolutely nothing wrong with practicing gentle parenting, right? And you have to do your own studies on what gentle parenting is. Maybe Google it, look up, do some research on it. But what what we, what a lot of people have turned that into, and, and I would even say uh, those of us in the body of believers is some of us have experienced so much trauma in our childhood from our upbringing. Right. Because our parents, you know, a, a lot of them did not spare the rod. And, um, you know, especially I would say in the African-American community, I can only speak for my own people and what I know and, you know, family history and those sorts of things. But a lot of our parents disciplined us or punished us and it was abusive and we didn't even know it. Right. That's how we were raised. And so whenever the word rod is, is instituted or we hear that word rod, we automatically think abuse. We automatically think hurt. We automatically think pain. And discipline now, discipline does come, there is there is some pain that comes along with discipline. Even if it's you, you know, uh, shifting your habits to do something that's more disciplined, not eating something that you know um, it's not beneficial for you. It's going to hurt you. It's not going to feel good to you. Exercising a lot of times doesn't feel good to us. But uh, nevertheless, it's cultivating uh, discipline in our lives. And it doesn't feel good in the moment. But it, it, it reaps great benefits if we continue in that way. But as it pertains to this word rod, I just want to hone in on it. The word rod um, in, in, in the Hebrew is uh, shebet or shebet, Right? And the root of it means to branch off, to branch off. It's a tool by a, used by a shepherd or a teacher. It is a symbol of authority in the hands of a ruler. Now, if you hear those words and automatically you tremble, as I said, it may be directly tied to, you know, um, some abuse that you may have experienced you know, in your life. It may have, you know, you hear those words and they may make you shudder because when you hear the word ride, you think of ruler, you think of, you know, a tool being used to guide and, you know, a symbol of authority and those sorts of things or something that's branched off, you know, uh, uh, growing up, a lot of parents used to use what we call a switch, you know, a branch off of a tree. And that's what you get your whipping with, you know, with that switch, right? Or whatever was available if it was a belt or whatever it was, nevertheless, they used that, you know, interchangeably with rod. Whatever it was, they used it to bring you into correction, right? When you went your own way, you did something that you weren't supposed to do. And sometimes you are, you, you may have gotten a, a, a whooping and you may have gotten, it was, over, you know, it was overly done. It may happen when your parents were angry with you, which is most of the time, you know, uh, and, and all of us parents have probably done so in a, in a fit of, you know, just being angry, you 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 discipline out of your anger, out of your frustration. And so gentle parenting and those sorts of things have been in, instituted or uh, introduced, you know, to so many as a way of, um, you know, uh, loving on your children, you know, uh, uh, getting to uh, understand them, disciplining them in, in ways that don't in, sometimes that, that, that doesn't involve, um, you know, uh, a physical discipline. That's not always the case. So this is my understanding of it. There's probably so much more to it. So I don't want to, you know, just put that term out there and you take that at face value from me. As I said, I want you to go and study it. Um, but really just to bring home the point that I feel that at the heart of God is this. The scripture says, whoever spares the rod hates his son. But he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. So what does that look like? As a believer, you can't not do what the word of God instructs us to do. And I pointed out that word right specifically to let you know that, yes, when discipline comes to our children, when we discipline them, sometimes it will be, you know, that you need to go and time out. You know, I need to revoke something from you. That may be a form of discipline. You can't play your video games. You know, you can't have this particular toy. You know, you may not get your allowance for this week. There's going to be some lines drawn. You, that, that cell, I'm going to take that cell phone from you. I'm going to do something so you can feel the consequences of your actions, right? That's a form of discipline. 
you know if you're a small child you may need to take a time out you need to go sit in the you know in a corner somewhere you need to have some time where you think about your actions there's a moment of reflection i want you to see that there are consequences for your actions so i'm going to do something to help you to see that those are all different types of discipline but then there is the rod of correction you know a, a simple tap on the hand sometimes to a small child especially one who has been in doing their own thing or going their own way or just is being unruly will bring them back into alignment with order and so some parents these days have completely tossed that out so if your child can haul off and slap you in the face in public and you'll just look at them and say awe and smile then you're not teaching them that that behavior is wrong to say that a child doesn't understand something when they'll turn around and laugh at you after they've done something like that to you means that you're turning a blind eye to negative behavior patterns. So everyone wants to use wisdom. You want to use wisdom. You want to be guided by the Holy Spirit 100%. And this is not a license to abuse. But we can't toss out the rod when we have kings and queens that we are raising to glorify God, to represent the kingdom of God. And at the root of it, what's being lost is the discipline of it. So whether a rod is being used or not, um, and, and there are times where you're gonna have to do a mixture of both, or you just do one or the other. But as it pertains to adding discipline to the lives of your children, are you hating, or do you love them or are you hating them? Are you showing hatred towards them by not bringing them into alignment with discipline according to the word of God? So we wonder why it is that when children get older um, and they don't wanna respect other people, they don't respect other adults, they don't respect authority in the classroom, they don't respect authority on the job, you know, um, older children, they lose every job that they have because they're unruly. They, they are tired in the atmosphere. No one can bring them into subjection or submission because they've not been taught throughout their lives that there's consequences for that type of behavior. So the message today to you is one where I just want to give you um, the Bible, not my opinion, not my thoughts. It's a sobering scripture every time I read it myself and when I consider my own children, understanding that there has to be consequences for, for negative actions, right? And that's not to say that you have to, you know, always reach, reach for a rod of correction, but there's definitely some things that you need to do to bring them into correction so that when they are older, we are to train up a child in the way that they should go when they're older, they won't depart from it, right? But if you're not teaching them from a young age to respect authority, to understand discipline, to understand right from wrong, and that if they do something that is wrong, that there will be consequences, right? You reap what you sow, okay? Then they're not gonna be able to grow into uh, young adults um, or go from being parent-led, right? To um, being uh, get to a place in their life where um, they learn to be self-led with discipline and then God-led, that God is, they give full surrender over to him. So without, you know, being able to learn discipline at a young age from parents, when there is an authority figure over you, when they're out on their own, there's still no sense of authority to them if you don't teach it to them at an early age. They won't understand that God is the ultimate authority. So when God wants to speak to them, when God is saying, I want you to go this way with your life and that way, they're less likely to follow the leading of God's spirit when there's no discipline. You know, God, as I said, will chasten us, his children, disciplines the son that he loves, right? So that we can go in the right way. He wants us to learn from our actions. He wants us to see that if you continue in this way or on this path or on this journey, it's going to lead you into destruction. 
And if you don't heed his voice, then there are times where he'll lend you to your own behaviors. He'll, he'll turn you over to a reprobate mind, you know, and, and let you figure it out so that you can understand that he is ruler of all. He reigns supreme and he wants us to submit ourselves to him. He's not looking for subservient hood. He's looking for us to come to him as Abba, as a father, as respect. And so there's even other scriptures, you know, and I may pull one or two of those up, you know, just where it talks about, you know, us uh, uh, respecting the discipline of our earthly fathers and then being able to respect the discipline that comes from our heavenly father. And what God is saying there is if you're not willing to or if you will respect your earthly father, then why not respect what I'm saying? Don't don't just look at the Bible, you know, read the words and then turn away and look, look away from it as though you didn't read what you read you didn't hear you know um what you heard and not allow for his word to transform you what he's saying is i want you to respond to it right but also understanding if you live contrary to it there's consequences so at the root of it all we have to understand um that there are consequences and to truly and genuinely show love to those who god has trusted into our care because oftentimes we forget that our children are on, they're sent on loan to us. They're God's children. And if, if he wants us to be good stewards over, over our children, which are his children first, then we need to follow his lead. We need to follow what he's saying. We have to do some things to uh, implement discipline with them. Otherwise, they will go their own way. And what it would produce in the future is a, a very destructive relationship with God to the point where they won't honor God. You know, so the enemy is working double time in these days to get everyone to, to, to turn, you know, to some other faith, to, you know, to believe that there's a, a other ways to God except through Jesus Christ, to believe that there's so many other faiths, you know, that we can take part in and we can be half Christian, half Hindu, half Buddhist, whatever. You know, we can go out and worship nature, then worship God. We can believe that the universe is blessing us instead of God and all these different things. But God is saying that there's only one way. So if we don't take him at his word, if we don't trust him, you know, with his word, that his word is true, you know, that it's not going to return void, that he's not going to change it, but that we just submit to it. We're going to get the results that he wants us to get from it. Um, another scripture, Hebrews chapter 12, 11, English Standard Version, it says, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So it's always hard when we have to discipline our children, in particularly with the rod, even if you got to bring a small child into a timeout you know, get, you know, take something from them and you see them cry and those sorts of things that works on the heart, especially as a mother, it can really work on your heart, you know, and you're more, you know, saddened by seeing them sad than you are bringing them into alignment, you know, with discipline, as I said. And so we just have to pay attention to the, what the word of God says. Again, that's Hebrews 12, 11. Discipline is going to bring us into righteousness. It's going to bring us into right standing with God. And so as we are doing those things in our own lives, we have to be mindful that we want our children to be brought up in that same way. At the end of the day, we got to get back to the roots. We got to get back to what the Bible is saying and not necessarily what's so common on social media and how you see this one doing this and the other one doing that and what's popular in culture. You can, you, you, your soul can't be saved based off the principles of culture. It's got to be saved based off the principles of the word of God by you confessing sins, uh, understanding that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and that God sent him to the earth, you know, to set you free from your sin. So it's not by works, you know, but by grace that we are saved. But there are guidelines that God has given us in the scripture to be um, in alignment with him to live a life of righteousness and holiness. So as it pertains to our children, if we are going to do all that we can to try to serve God 
and live for God, then we need to be leading them in the same way. Yes, you can lead them, lead them with your actions, right? But as a, as a child is being groomed, as they're growing, it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility to bring them into alignment with the truth. And the truth is the word of God. And um, in, in that scripture that I referenced, training up a child in the way he should go, that's Proverbs 22, 6. And in the English Standard Version, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 23, 13 through 15 says, do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with the rod, he will not die. If you strike him with the rod, he will not die. Hallelujah. Um, you will save his soul from Sheol. My son, if, if my heart is, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. So what is it saying here? If you strike the child with the rod, you know, if you have to discipline them physically, it's going to save them from death. It's going to save them from hell. It's going to save them from the pit. A couple of tears for a few moments. They're going to dry up and they're going to be fine and they're going to go on their way. But one thing they learn early on is if you don't speak or if you don't say something, when you know you see them doing the wrong thing, it just gives them the motivation to continue to do that wrong thing over and over and over again. And so what does that look like when they become adults? They're going to practice doing the wrong thing over and over and over because they never had anyone to answer to about their behavior. And so lastly, um, I just want you to get in your mind. You know, we want to demystify every lie that pertains to the rod. Again, we're not talking about abusing children, but you have to guide them and steer them in the right direction. And yes, that does come with discipline. Yes, that does come sometimes with a spanking, that you spank them some way or somehow to show them right from wrong. You just don't let them go and do whatever they want to do and have their way or just act out, right? All of our behaviors come with consequences, whether good or whether bad, but get this picture in your mind as a, uh, uh, the Hebrew uh, term or the Hebrew word for rod, as I said, is Shabbat. It, it's a stick or it's a rod, um, and, like a scepter uh, for correction. And um, the picture here is, you know, um, a, a, a staff in, the shepherd, in a shepherd's hands. So if you imagine in your mind a shepherd that has a flock of sheep, as the sheep are just kind of trudging along, going from here to there, the shepherd is taking that staff and he's just, he's tapping them. Okay, get back in line. This is the way we're going. He's going to tap them whenever they start to veer off. The one's trying to go this way. He's going to tap them to get them back in line, to send them in the right direction. Because what is the shepherd doing? He's guiding the flock into a particular direction. Oftentimes there may be danger. There may be some animals out there ready to attack some of these sheep and the shepherd is aware of that. There may be some things out in front of them, right? That the shepherd may have to uh, bring them to a halt with the staff. Nevertheless, get that picture in your mind. You are the shepherd. You're leading the flock. You have the staff in your hand. Use it to wield uh, 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 the weight of authority so that your children will go in the way that they should, that they would ultimately um, go towards Christ. They would live a, a chaste life. They would live a life that glorifies God, that is uh, within the boundaries of love, but also within the, the, the confinement of discipline, that they understand discipline from an early age. And life won't be as difficult for them when they get older, as it pertains to having healthy habits, as it pertains to having healthy relationships and understanding roles, rules and responsibilities on jobs, um, in all ministry platforms, in whatever arena they should find themselves. 
they'll understand that there's a chain of command and that at some time or another, all of us have to submit to, the, to, to a higher authority. So that's what this is about. So please understand and please hear this, all of it in balance. But do hear that you're training them, you know, and this is so cliche, to reign. You're training them to be their best self, to, to, to understand that you can get to a high place in life, but if you get there in, without discipline, you're not gonna be able to stay there. You're gonna fall if you don't have discipline. If you don't have order, if you don't have structure, if there's no guidelines, that's what the heart of God is, is crying out, I believe, that parents would understand that we're working together with him so that these hearts and minds would turn towards him and at the end of the day, their souls will be saved and they'll be able to live in eternity with him because they understood authority and discipline along their, the, the, the journey of their lives. So I pray that today's message would encourage you. I pray that these scriptures that I share with you are a blessing to you. And I also pray there's so many more. There's so many more. There's so many more on discipline and children. We are the children of God. And because he loves us, he disciplines us. So we need to be extensions of that to our children. So God bless you. Be encouraged with this word, but also just see, receive the loving rebuke, receive the, the, the sobering that comes through reading these scriptures. I pray that you utilize them with your family and in your life. And I shall share them with someone else uh, that you love that needs to be brought into uh, understanding. So God bless you all and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.